Hello and welcome back. This is Penny Sansevieri and Amy Cornell, and this is the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. Amy, I'm so excited that we keep, keep doing these shows. We are well into our 22nd, I think this might be our 22nd show. Um, it's crazy. It's been so fun. This has been really, really fun. And now we have a crew of Bertie, Frankie, and Cosmo. Um, <laughs> I know. If, it, if you guys haven't been to the podcast page on the website, it's just our URL forward slash podcast. Pretty easy to find. You have to check out our production crew. Our production crew is just awesome. We love it. <laughs> we just, we love them all. They are fabulous. Cosmo is actually upstairs napping and probably planning our book, our uh, podcast tour. So we're really excited. <laughs> I love it. He's just waiting for the opening. <laughs> he's just waiting for the, yeah, right, exactly. He's meditating on ideas. That's what he's doing. So I'm really excited about this particular show. I was emailing, sometimes we email ideas, Amy and I email ideas back and forth. And I was doing gift lists for a client, which we'll expand on in just a minute. And I really love gift lists. Like I get onto my Apple news app and there's all, like you see all kinds of different gift lists for, um, you know, fitness or, you know, makeup or whatever, like kids gift lists and stuff like that. And sometimes I'll email them to Amy and I'm like, oh my God, I want everything. Or I start adding stuff to my Amazon wish list or whatever. But gift lists are so fun and so easy um, to both participate in as well as to create your own. And I, I just love them so much. Oh, I agree. I use gift guides a lot because it's, it gets hard. Sorry, but it's true. It's like, I use gift guides so much because I appreciate the recommendations from trusted sources. Right. And that's why these carry so much weight because there's so much going on out there and e-commerce is so insane. And you know, for what it's worth, it's so easy to get a lot of positive reviews nowadays that are not necessarily genuine as well. And I've gotten burned a couple times, so I'm way more cognizant of that. So I will say my reliance on actual trusted sources for their recommendations has skyrocketed versus just, you know, standard reviews on retail sites. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that too. I think that there is a, um, there's a, I don't know, there's a certain, when, when you're following somebody or if, <clears throat> you know, if you, even if, if it's on Pop Sugar or one of those sites, they are, they really are trusted sources, right? They get, you know, they, and, and they have to dig through the clutter because they get pitched a lot of different things. And sometimes the editors try out the product, et cetera. So no, I really, really love them, but let's, but Part of the reason why this show, this particular episode was so exciting to me is because a lot of times authors don't think about how their book can be a gift guide. And about six months ago, there were a whole bunch of gift guides that included coloring books. I mean, coloring books seems like a phase that has, you know, was 64 years ago, but it was really just two years ago, I think. And um, there was a, there was a gift guide that I saw and it had a whole bunch of different coloring books on there, which we've worked with coloring book authors. And one of them was, a, you know, a cat coloring book. And then it was a, you know, I don't know, it was something, you know, there was like something else. It was really fun. And we've, we've used gift lists before to pitch our authors to, but it just really occurred to me that not enough authors utilize this strategy. And we're going to, that's why we wanted to do this show and break this down for you. Um, so many of you have probably already heard of Hara, which is Help a Reporter Out, and it, you can find it at helpareporterout.com. They get all kinds of media leads, etc. cetera. Um, they, starting in, well, actually they run it all year. I was going to say starting in, you know, July and August, but really you see, these, you can see these gift, gift, gift list requests all year. Um, you can, they have bloggers on there that are requesting particular gift lists, like maybe it's for Father's Day or Mother's Day or Valentine's Day or whatever. Um, and some of them will say no books, which they say that up front because they know they get pitched a lot of books, but most of them are actually very open to finding uh, authors who have books that are appropriate to the topic and to their market. But you can also do a quick online search for bloggers and online media that have produced gift guides in prior years. Um, and some places like BuzzFeed that I mentioned 
early on and pop sugar, they do gift cards all the time and they have, you know, contact us and submission guidelines, not necessarily for gift guides in particular, but for stories right on their website. So you can contact the editors and find out when, you know, what gift guides that they have coming up and potentially submit to them. Right. And I think the key with this, Penny, you know, in my opinion, when we're working with a client and getting creative is that you have to walk that fine line of being creative, but also being realistic. Right. We, we encourage authors to get super creative when it comes to pitching themselves to align with something going on in the news or popular culture. Um, we've done an episode on that because you really have to kind of connect the dots for the media in order for it to make sense sometimes. And that's on you. But when it comes to pitching gift guides, you really have to make them understand that you're a sure thing. So for example, if you wrote a book on succeeding as an entrepreneur or starting a small business, you know, yeah, that might be a good Christmas gift for the exact right person in your life. But as a general rule, a book like that is not going to make sense for a broader market, which a lot of these outlets cater to, right. you know, so gift guides, they like to appeal to as wide of an audience as possible and they like it to be a sure thing. So you know, unless you dig really deep and happen to find like a business publication that's doing a gift guide, that would be awesome. But my point is kind of be realistic about where your book fits into different holidays and make sure that that's something that a broad audience would go, yes, that makes a lot of sense, you know, and spend your time on those opportunities versus, you know, spending your time pitching your kind of niche book to just every gift guide out there. Because again, you want to be focused and you want to be strategic with your time, you know, with your efforts. Right, right, right. And then I also think that, I mean, you know, as, as we mentioned, the gift guides are, you know, gift guides are, cause you've used them a lot, right. And they're year round. <clears throat> they're, you know, teacher gifts and graduation gifts and all of this stuff that your book could potentially fit in with. And, for some authors, you know, you may have something that fits for Mother's Day and Father's Day and potentially, you know, teacher gift ideas, et cetera. So you may fit a couple of different markets, but I think what Amy said is very accurate is that you've got to be, you've got to be super specific. Um, so just the steps for doing gift guides and magazines do, so magazines do gift guides, um, online media does gift guides, as I mentioned, Harrow, you can find Harrow. Bloggers do gift guides. The magazines, um, at the as you're listening to this and you're thinking about hitting up magazines for the holiday season, they're probably, you know, you're probably too late for holiday issues for the because the holiday issues tend to close earlier because they're so robust um, and there's lots of lots of advertising in them and things like that. So they're probably already closed but you may be able to slide their book into one of their online portals. So start by doing, and you don't have to necessarily do it by your specific genre. So I would just start broadly. I would start looking up gift guides and see what comes up and see how current, like if somebody has did a gift guide in, you know, 2016 or something, they probably just stopped doing them. But if they did one in 2019 and 2018 and 2017, they're probably going to keep doing them. So if they have a consistent, um, if they do can gift guides consistently, that's probably a really good, um, that's probably a really good, uh, good way to do this. So let's talk quickly about, um, pitching them because much like the blogger pitching, you need something that's very tightly written. And we've talked about pitching before on prior shows and also follow their guidelines, which may involve mailing them a book as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, gifts are more often than not going to be physical copies when it comes to books. A lot, of, you know, gifting an ebook is really not something that, you know, a lot of people think of. Um, so whoever you're pitching will likely want to see it in person. They want to feel it in their hands, check out how your product presents itself. Because again, the person recommending your product, they're putting themselves behind this too. Like they are making a recommendation. So they take this very seriously. Um, so they need to be a sure thing. So don't make the person you're pitching kind of guess why your book makes sense, you know? So right. make that pitch very, very clear what it has to offer, the individual it's being gifted to. And I would say this is also really important, why it's unique enough to make the list. You know, these lists typically, I think I've, I've barely seen many that max out at maybe 50 products. And that is a huge gift list. 
a lot of them are much more um, condensed than that. Yeah. So in order to get a book on there, like you really have to bring your A game to the pitch for sure. Yeah. And I think that it also makes sense uh, to mention any kind of awards you've won, accolades, uh, great reviews, et cetera, because anything that you can do, basically you are selling this book to the, to the, you know, the person writing the gift guide and the opportunity to be in that gift guide could really increase your sales tremendously. Right. And so what about, I mean, a lot of times with pitching, we end up talking about the newness of a book or its publication date, how relevant it is. How does that work into the whole gift guide pitching thing? Then? Well, ideally, you know, a book should be new, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So if you have something that is spot on, that's maybe trending right now, um, or if you have something that is uh, even a bit older and it, there, it, there's still, you know, it's an evergreen book, there's still relevancy to it. We've worked with a number, number of books that would absolutely kind of fit this model. Some of them are um, like we have an 80s music book right now that we're working with, which, you know, 80s music, obviously it's not the 80s. <laughs> it's still, you know, people are really like that kind of nostalgia people really like. Um, and so that's something that year over year over year, the author could conceivably pitch it to gift guides um, because it would always be relevant. Typically, if it's something around you know, as books age, generally, like if it's money related or if it's, you know, health and fitness, I mean, those things tend to age fairly quickly. But if you're submitting to a gift guide, for example, and it's a Father's Day gift guide or something, and you have a great thriller book or something that you've gotten lots of awards for and you want to submit submit to them submit it to them because again you're sitting on something that's fairly evergreen typically though i mean if you the newer the book the better the chances that you're gonna get you know that your book is gonna um get featured yeah i think that makes a lot of sense i mean new is obviously going to be that initial like foot in the door for sure across the board no matter what but that's where the creativity and bringing your A-game comes in. You know, with everything going on with COVID, I will say that there are still a lot of people that are digging into new hobbies. They're finding new creative interests. You know, yeah. there's that if you have a book that's a bit older, but kind of fits a market need for where we're at you know, as a society right now, that's a great example also of when an older title can really, you know, it can still really shine and it can make a list for sure. Well, and that's really, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I did, I taught it on an online class last month and it was to the, for a romance writers group. And this author said, she goes, you know, I write all these romance novels, but I wrote this book about baking sourdough bread like seven years ago. And for some, she said, for some weirdly random reason, it started selling like crazy. So that's an example of exactly what you mentioned, right? We're taking all these new hobbies, apparently baking, everybody's baking, right? Um, so that's an example of something where this book on sourdough bread that she got all these reviews for and hadn't really done anything with, she could very easily, you know, send this to a gift guide because it was actually, it was extremely well done. Um, and Amy, we did something, so this is a little bit of a, now we're going to turn these gift guides on, on their head, but we did something fun a, a few years ago where we created a gift guide for an author that we work with for her blog. Oh, it was so much fun. And for what it's worth, this was part of a consult we did for her. So I just want to put that out there in case anyone else is feeling a bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> and would like to brainstorm some ideas because I know it's definitely, and one of the reasons we did this is because it's so easy to get too close to your own work to sometimes think of out of the box ideas for how right. you can present your book. Uh, but essentially we helped her narrow down and focus on who her prime audience was, like who's actually visiting her site, like who's on her super fan group, like what are these people about? And then we came up with some really fun, realistic gift ideas that suited the needs and interests of her particular reader market. And it was just a really cool, um, unique way to create content for the blog. And um, it, and it, it's just fun also. It happened to be, you know, Christmas gifts, but it's also a cool way to kick off the Christmas season. Everybody's starting to get excited about it, you know, so it was really fun. It was a fun way to take some pressure off of creating blog content too. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. And it is a, um, it, it, the gift list, the gift guide that we created, of course, included her book as well. 
but yeah. it really is a fun <laughs> way. Like I've thought about doing that for our blog this year, like writer gift. I think yeah, maybe, maybe we did that a few years ago. Gifts to writers, right? The gifts to the writer in your life, um, which is so fun to do. So both, you know, pitching your, pitching yourself to gift guides, which I love, and, um, you know, putting up your own gift guide is, is always a fun thing to do. And the other thing that we should mention is, is timing, right? Because that's one of the things that has come up um, for us in terms of these gift guides is the timing of all of this stuff. Right, exactly. We definitely, we have authors that come to us pretty much year round. And without fail, no matter what time of year it is, we will always get people coming to us saying, like, I really want this to be considered as a holiday gift. Right. You know? And so, Penny, what, what can you kind of general guidelines can you provide for authors who are trying to plan these out? Like, is there a big difference between like, what's the cutoff realistically that you've seen for the Christmas holiday versus maybe how far in advance you have to contact places for this, what we'd call smaller holidays, like Father's Day, Mother's Day, things like that. Well, I will say that, so this year might be a little bit of an exception because I think some of the gift guides this year are getting a little bit of a later start just because uh, with everything that's going on. And I think, you know, with um, people working from home who aren't used to working from home. So I'm seeing some gift guides with deadlines as late as the end of September. And, um, but typically, typically for the holiday season, those gift guides are well in place by July or August. Even if they don't run in July or August, the blogger usually wants, all, or the online media wants all their stuff in by then so that they know so that they can plan for it so they're not doing it last minute. Um, so typically, the bigger the holiday, the further out that you have to go. With, um, they call it Christmas in July for a reason. Typically, all Christmas promotions are being handled through July, but like I said, this year, which is why we wanted to, I wanted to do this episode. Things are skewed a little bit later, so you may still find some availability um, for some of these gift guides at the end of September. But keep in mind that there are other holidays too. So Amy mentioned, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, you know, graduation, then again, coming up next year, uh, Valentine's Day, but all of these other sort of not necessarily because I don't want to call mothers and fathers mothers day and fathers day smaller holidays <laughs> but because there you know there there goes most of our listening audience but um you know some of these other hol holidays that people don't always think of right and there are always opportunities out there so I like to keep an eye on frankly I like to keep an eye on gift guides all the time and I keep an eye on them just because Sometimes even if somebody's working with us that doesn't have where we didn't necessarily tell them that we're going to submit them to gift guides, if I see something that's right for them, I will always send their book to these gift guides just because, you know, it's always, it's always worth a shot. If it looks like it's a good match, it's always worth a shot. The most that they can say is no, um, but the best that they can say is send me a copy of your book. I'd like to take a look at it and consider it for the gift guide, which is always fabulous. Right. So, I mean, the takeaway here would be to start planning your pitch for the different holidays, right? I mean, yeah, I, 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 would, I yeah, would always, I want the present. yeah, I would always be kind of on the lookout for it. So I would say, you know, if you, li if you listen to this, you think this is a great idea, start to search, you know, do the search on, as I mentioned, do the search for gift guides, start to kind of identify a few of them. Maybe you say, okay, look, I'm going to focus on these five or maybe 10 blogs if you have that much time and keep an eye on their gift guides. And if they don't, you know, if you can't find any information about submitting to their gift guides on their website, by all means, contact them and say, listen, are you gonna be doing a gift guide for this year? Maybe it's already wrapped up, but if it's not, can, can you send me the guidelines for submitting um, to your gift guide for consideration? You can always reach out to them, but I would recommend, yes, it's a great time to do it for the holidays, but always keeping this on your radar screen because, Gift buying is never easy. People, like you mentioned, trusted sources, blogs that you follow, whatever. It's the same thing. It's just, it's just like blogger pitching, right? When you get a review from a trusted blogger, you're going to sell some books. When you get on a gift gift guide, in a gift guide from a trusted blogger, you are definitely going to sell some books. And then next year, start thinking about magazines because magazines do gift guides um, quite frequently, actually. And I know, for example, Real Simple, 
which not everybody listening is going to necessarily be a fit for Real Simple, but Real Simple has lots and lots and lots of gift guides throughout the year in their magazine. So magazines, obviously, have much longer lead time. You can start planning those out um, even right now for next year. I think that's really smart. Yeah, and the longer you plan ahead, the better your pitch is going to be too. So it's always just a great exercise because it makes you dig deep and figure out all the best features of your book and how to present that in a really exciting, fun, unique way. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Again, we love show ideas. Send us your ideas. Send us your show feedback. Um, what you liked about the shows. Are you enjoying the mini-sodes, which we love doing? And um, we always love a review. Thank you again so much for tuning in. This is Penny Sansevieri, Amy Cornell, and Bernie, Frankie, and Cosmo saying thank you for listening, and we wish you great success with your book.